Welcome back, everyone, to episode 10 of the My Not Business podcast presented by Bennett Creative Media. Very exciting guest, personally, because I have a ton of questions, but very exciting guest today. How's it going, Russ? Good. How are you doing, Easton? I'm doing fantastic. I'm really excited for this conversation. Uh, so I'm not going to spill any beans about what you do because I want you to tell the people. So for the people that don't know what you do, uh, let them know, you know, kind of what do you do? Uh, well, about five years ago, I kind of stumbled into becoming a content creator, AKA YouTuber. And, uh, it just kind of took off. Like I was, uh, my goal when I started this whole process was to document my experience of flying a drone for the very first time. Mm -hmm. So I've always been into cameras and photography and videography. Like I've always kind of dabbled in that. I've always felt like I had kind of a creative side to me, you know, a little bit at least. And I wanted to kind of see what I could do with that. And, um, and so I had been into, you know, when I lived in Wyoming, I got into photography quite a bit. And then I thought, you know what, the next thing would be to get into drones. And so yeah. I just started researching it, ordered my first drone, and I just started recording my experience, you know, the unboxing of it, uh, flying it, learning all the ins and outs of it. And I just started posting it on YouTube and, you know, nothing real high quality production. I just, you know, just sharing information as a first time owner of a drone. and people just started subscribing. And that's what I was going to ask you. Was it like, did you, when you originally started the YouTube channel, because you've got a pretty substantial YouTube following, I think it's what 190,000, somewhere in that range. Yeah. I think, which, you know, that's, that's, that's pretty, that's a lot of people. Uh, when you started this, did you, I'm thinking that you just started it as like kind of a hobby, but did you ever think in the beginning, like, Hey, I want to do this as a business type thing, or did you just start strictly as a hobby? I will tell you this, like, um, before that, a couple of years before that, my son and I, he was really into Pokemon. Okay. So we started a Pokemon channel, unboxing Pokemon cards, right? And it was, it, it was not good. I mean, for one thing, he hated it because we had to wait to open the cards when we purchased them oh, to, to film it. So it was driving him crazy and it didn't work really well. And the reason that we wanted to kind of do that is because, you know, we see all these YouTubers making a ton of money and yeah. we didn't know that. YouTube, mm-hmm. you can make money on YouTube. And we're like, we, I had no idea. Well, then my son's like, you know, looking at Ryan's toys, you know, this little eight year old kids making millions and millions of dollars on YouTube. Yep. And I, I didn't understand it. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't think the majority of people do understand it. Were you questioning like, how is this kid making so much money? I, I, yeah, I was. And so I started researching. I'm like, wow. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it's something. Yeah. Right. And so And uh, so we did that for a little bit. It just, it just didn't work out. And it was kind of cringe, actually, some of the videos that we were making. So I'm like, okay, we're going to give up on that. But at the same time, I bought that drone. I bought the Mavic Pro because it was the most popular drone at the time. And Mm -hmm. great image quality, great stability. It was so fun. And I just thought, you know what? Maybe this is a way that we could get into YouTube. And so I just started doing that. And and then it just started taking off. And after I got 1,000 subscribers, I'm like, you know what? Maybe this is something I could do on the side. So is that what it took you? It took you about a thousand subscribers until just, you kind of thought about, okay, I think there's something here. Yeah. I just, it just kind of clicked and you're like, okay, well people like learning stuff. You know, there's, yeah. there's basically two ways to succeed on YouTube. You teach people something or you entertain them. Well, I'm not very good at entertaining people, right? I'm, you know, Mr. Yeah. Beast. That's why he's the big, as big oh, as yeah. he is. He's an entertainer. Which his videos are insane. Really? But Anybody can educate somebody on something. You know something that That's someone, someone else, else does. Exactly. And you can teach it. And that's how you succeed on YouTube. And so that's what I did. And and it's not so much that I knew something. It's that I wanted to share as I learned something mm-hmm. because that, you know, I wanted to kind of appeal to the the average Joe of this is what to experience when you get a drone for the first time. And yeah. And I think that's, that's kind of why it took off because people felt that connection, you know? And that's what I was wondering. So did your obsession with drones... Did it begin because you're just like, oh, I just want to fly a drone or were you always kind of like, did you have in the back of your mind? I want a drone. I want a drone. And you finally just went for it. No. Yeah. I've always kind of wanted a drone when, when they first came out and they start, first got popular. But, and I'm, and to be honest, I'm not obsessed with drones at all. I'm obsessed with content creation. Okay. And, and drones, you know, is kind of the venue or the subject or the niche or whatever that I'm in. Yeah. Like I I could be a content creator about anything, Mm -hmm. but it just happened to just, the timing was just right where, you know, I do want to create stuff with a drone, but at the same time, I want to be successful on YouTube, you know? And so those two just go together just because of the timing drones were just becoming popular. And, uh, 
so yeah, it's worked out pretty well. So you said your first videos were a little bit cringy on the card opening side. Did you learn a lot from that when moving into the drone things after you had made those videos? You know, a, a little bit. Mostly what I learned is just by watching others okay. in the niche, in the drone niche, and basically kind of copying, you know, to be yeah. honest, you, you you kind of reinvent what someone else does. You see what they're doing and what they're teaching people. And then you do the same thing, but then you discover something new and then you put your own twist on it. Mm -hmm. And at the time there was a lot of channels that was, you know, in the drone niche at, you know, because it was the time when the Mavic pro was getting big. And so I, what I tried to do with my videos is to make it like more personal. Like I tried to get people to connect with my personality, Okay, you know, like yeah. just that, you know, that average Joe that, you know, I'm not an expert on anything. Yeah. And, and that's what I try to kind of convey in all my videos is that, Hey, I'm you know, one of you. Yeah. Is I screw up like a lot. Okay. I still do. Yeah. You know, I crash drones all the time and I'm not a, I'm not an expert drone pilot. I'm really not. And I'm getting better. Yeah. You know, absolutely. But I think people connect with that. And I think that's why people coming keep coming back and watching the videos and subscribing. So, so the business side of things, when you were deciding to start this YouTube channel and you said it clicked around a thousand subscribers, when did you think that, you know, I want to have this as maybe a business? Was there a business structure in the beginning? When did it start forming more into a business where, Hey, I can make money off of this rather than, Hey, I'm just kind of learning out. I have drums. no structure. <laughs> There's no structure. I just, so it's still, you're still looking for that structure. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm still working on that, but no, I think when I, you know, when I first got my first affiliate, you know, there's a, okay. and we can talk about that and probably getting it cart ahead of the horse here. But when I first got paid for my first affiliate and I'm like, mm -hmm. wow, that, that was a lot of money. Like for, an affiliate link. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, and like I said, we'll talk about that, but yep. you know, I got my first Google check and it was like $13 or mm -hmm. something. I'm like, Hey, that's kind of cool. You know, you got I'm money just, for just making I, a video. Yeah. I'm having fun making videos and and then it started rolling into $150 and mm -hmm. then it got you know a little bit higher and higher. And I'm like, okay, well now, now I'd start researching analytics and what the analytics okay. mean. And how I start, long did it take you to get into the analytics before uh, you two years, probably okay. before I really like, you know, try to try to like, I don't concentrate on analytics. Like looking at mm -hmm. the numbers is fun. Yeah. You know, like looking at the subscribers and the views and things like that, but, but you have to, you know, if you want yeah. to succeed, you have to see what's working and what's not working and you have to evolve and, and, and it's fun to try new things and see what happens, but you got to kind of not sway too far Don't out of fix it. If it's not broken. Exactly. Okay. Because then people, you lose people and they get, you know, they're like, what, what is this guy doing? You know? And then they click off. So, so building a community on YouTube, then how have you found that that works? Like, uh, did it take you, did you have to do certain things to start building that community or kind of just all fall into place? Yeah. You got to be engaged. Uh, huge. Um, one thing that always drove me crazy when I was getting started, even before I became a YouTuber or a content creator is that when I would comment on videos, yep. I'd get no reply or I'd, you know, DM people asking questions about things. Nobody would ever reply. And I'd go through the comments and I'd look and these creators were not talking to anyone. And they would pose questions on mm -hmm. their social media, but then they wouldn't reply to the comments about the questions. So I'm like, I don't want to be like that. I want to be yeah. the person that's, that engages. Mm -hmm. And so I read every comment. I still read every comment today, you know, even with, you know, even when it's a lot of comments, yeah, almost 200 K I, I can't reply to all of them, but, yeah. but those people take the time to watch my video. They take the mm -hmm. time to watch the ads. You know, if there's ads on the video, they take the time to comment I can take a little bit of time to at least read what they comment. And if there's a question, I try to reply to it and try yeah. to help them out. And, and I, I think that really helps the channel grow um, because those, those creators that are so big, I get it that you're so big and you're yeah. so busy. You can't reply to everybody, but then have one of your team do yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, you got plenty of people to help you out to, yeah. to do some of that. Yeah. I think the engagement is huge. So as far as the process for creating one of these videos go, I want to get more into the creative side of it now. What does it look like for you? Is it researching and scripting or how does it, how does that work? Yeah. For myself, when it comes to like drone videos anyway, um, I'll, the first thing I'll do is I'll take the drone out, I'll fly it, I'll use it. I'll try to do everything that I can. And then I'll try to find things that are confusing okay. that maybe to someone that hasn't flown before. I still target new users. I still mm -hmm. target those people that are just getting into it. And I just think, you know what? 
um, they pr- probably should know about this. Yeah. And so I'll start to sit down, write up a script and then I'll go back and erase it. And then I'll start over. Like, now are your scripts like word for word or are they like bullet points? Uh, both. I have done both. I actually do better. Like I feel like my videos are better when I practice first mm-hmm. and then do the bullet points and then record, you know, without anything okay. in front of me. But I would say 75% of my videos are all 100% word for word scripted. Like, so, tel- so do you use a teleprompter? Yep, then? Teleprompter. Okay. Yep. So it's, it saved a lot of time for me Yeah. because when I would do it strictly with memory mm-hmm. and notes, I mean, it would take me six hours to make a video. You're all over the place to, to record a video because I have to start over so many times. Yeah. And I, I try to minimize jump cuts, but mm-hmm. you got it. You know, you're going to have them. But when well, I got especially in the YouTube world, oh, such man. a quick. Yep. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. So when I got a teleprompter, that saves so much time. So, and then it's just an art form trying to not look like you're reading from the teleprompter. Yeah. You know, honestly, it is a little bit of acting. I mean, I have yeah. clients, I do a lot of corporate work and clients that are like, Hey, uh, can we use a teleprompter? And I'm like, yeah. man, do I try to stray them away yeah. from that as far as possible? I'm <laughs> yeah, like, you can, but you shouldn't. You're reading it. Yeah, I'm like, you can see Hi, it. I'm Steve Johnson. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Lawyer at blah, blah, blah. I'm like, Oh gosh. Yeah. Uh, going more into the, growing of the YouTube channel now. So growing a YouTube following, as people know, might be a little bit difficult unless, you know, you strike the perfect storm, but it takes effort kind of like anything you do. Were there any strategies that you used to grow the platform? Was there anything that really worked that you kind of had the aha moment where like, oh, that clicked or was it kind of a long grind? How did the the strategizing of growing the channel work? I, I would say it's a combination. You know, there it's mostly a long grind, you know, just kind of keep engaging with people and things like that. And then engaging with the other people in your niche, okay. you know, like, like the drone niche is very close. We, we all visit with each other. We all share things with each other. And, and I think that's really important. And that, and then you, and then you display that, you show that in your content and, yeah. and they're like, Hey, this is a great community and I want to be a part of this community. And, um, but yeah, I don't think there's anything that I really focused on to mm-hmm. build the audience. I did, you know, a couple of years ago, realize how important, you know, the extra, the other social media things were, you know, especially with COVID when TikTok came along, I'm like, you know what, I'll start TikTok. Yeah. It's not something that most of my audience appreciates, you know, because most of my audience is middle-aged and over, Mm -hmm. you know, men. I saw your TikTok like a month ago and I think, and I was like, what the heck? I didn't know you had a TikTok. Yeah. And and some of them do quite well. Yeah. The the purpose of TikTok for me is to get people over to my YouTube. Push people to YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and it's also fun to make yeah. a 60 second video, but like Instagram and Twitter, just engaging with other creators, engaging with brands, you know, trying to, you know, get sponsorships eventually. And, and, and I so, think those type of things, I think a good lead in for that, uh, as far as like engaging with other people in your uh, niche is that the reason I found you, I obviously knew you from athletic training and all that stuff, but I had no idea you had a YouTube channel mm-hmm. until I got a tweet from 51 drones that said, Hey, 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 whatever it was. And I look and I'm like, wait a minute. I'm like, that's Russ. <laughs> what the hell? So I think I DM'd you and I was like, when did, where did this YouTube channel come from? Yeah. And that's kind of how it started. But yeah, just engaging with people that are in that niche really goes a long way. Uh, I want to pivot a little bit now. You said you, well, you obviously grew this channel and you're working on different things. I assume just creating better content, you know, create good content and things will work for you. When did you get to the point where people started reaching out for sponsorships and that, you know, they wanted to pay you to make a video or they wanted to send you free product. When was that kind of transition? You know, I don't even, I can't even recall. I think um, my first sponsorship actually was not a drone company. It was a portable power station company. Okay. And um, I'm still working with them and it's grown quite a bit. And uh, that's another thing that I'm interested in is polar portable power and okay electric vehicles, things like that, all sorts of things, you know, yeah. you try to expand a little bit because I want to, I want to do what I'm interested in, Yeah. but you don't want to do too much. But, but anyway, ha, I think they were the first ones to reach out and said, Hey, we'd like to sponsor a video. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you think about this proposal? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Give me, yeah. you know, and that's uh, what I was going to ask you. Yeah. What was your first initial thought? Were you like, Oh my gosh. Oh, someone yeah. Wants to- yeah. No negotiations. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I'll take it. Yep. Let's do it. That's awesome. You know, cause it's your first one and you're like, yeah. wow, somebody actually offered to sponsor me. Yeah. And then, uh, and then I started researching sponsorships mm-hmm. because I, I never really thought about that side of it, you know, yeah. the affiliates and then AdSense and that was it. Mm-hmm. But, but then some of my friends are like, you know, getting sponsored by this company and that company and large brands. I'm like, wow, that's pretty cool. So then I started visiting with 
some of those people and asked, how did you do this? And they, well, just send them an email and send them a proposal and this is how it works. And so a few have gotten back. It's still um, not where I want it to be because I think in the big picture, affiliates comes and goes. Yeah. Um, AdSense comes and goes depending on views and things like that. But, but sponsorships are long-term and they're, I mean, they can be big, like really yeah. big. And that's what I was going to ask you is like, as far as the sponsorship side of things goes and I don't want you to give me any physical numbers or anything but you got the three different avenues which is AdSense sponsorships and affiliate links I've heard other creators talk about that the sponsorships is kind of the main revenue driving factor is that kind of how it is for you too or how does that breakdown look for you I wouldn't say it's there yet but it's getting closer okay um so would you say AdSense is the main thing yeah yeah, for sure Uh, used to be affiliates and then AdSense as my audience grew got a lot bigger Mm -hmm. affiliates kind of trickling down because I think people are just spending less money because of the economy you know uh and that goes up and down seasonally as well Black Friday fun yeah Prime Day we just had Prime Day I had two days of like wow so So I suppose those are days you mark off on your calendar Prime Day Black Friday getting closer to the holidays yeah so I mean it's just like sweeps you know you got to make money during the time when yeah people are spending money so but but yeah sponsorships are long term um you can grow them and Mm -hmm. you can negotiate as your numbers grow and as your you know clicks grow and and brands are just eager because for them relatively you know you're creating evergreen content for them and it's super cheap yeah long term you know if you get you know it might be a lot of money for a creator but for a multi-million dollar company it's nothing yeah you know their marketing budget's huge so. so how does that go about building these sponsorships with people uh are you looking to like when they reach out to you is it mainly like hey we'll send you free product is it like hey here's like cash obviously not cash but like money is it a mix of both what kind of sponsorships are you doing there Nobody, no company has ever written to me and said, we'd like to sponsor you monetarily. Okay. Like, Hey, we got this product. We want you to promote it. We'll give you a free product. And at first when you're, when you're a relatively new creator, that sounds great. Mm -hmm. And, and it's still valuable. I still do that with a lot of brands, Yeah. but you get to a point where you realize the effort and the time that you're putting, you're putting in 40 hours into a video. Right. Right. I mean, it. you should be compensated for your time mm-hmm. more than a product that's going to last a year and then gets stored on a shelf or sold on yeah. Gear Focus or on eBay or whatever. It's Brands try to get away with things when it comes to marketing their products or their goods or their services. And mm-hmm. so, um, so I'm kind of getting to the point where, you know, if someone says, hey, we'll give you a free product if you review this. I, I've turned, I turn them down now yeah. where before I'd be like, Oh yeah, give me more, more, yeah, more. And then I got a studio full of crap that I'm never going to use. Never use. Okay. So I'll do giveaways and stuff. And, mm-hmm. and it and, sounds, I'm sure it sounds great because you're like, Oh, I get this free product. Right. But then it's like, well, if I get this free product, I'm going to make one video about it and then never touch it. Right. And it's kind of a fine line because you want to review those products that people want because you want that audience. Yeah. You want to draw on those people. You want to build you those know, views. You, those views and everything, get those clicks and get new people to the channel and seeing what you do and what you're capable of. Mm -hmm. And in turn, that brings more brands, you know, like, Hey, he did really good for so and so uh, on this, then let's try him and see if he works for us. And so, so I'm getting more of that now, but, okay, but yeah, you have to kind of decide, you know, what you're willing, how much work you're going to put in. And if it's worth it, like, like I have a, I have an interview tomorrow with a new brand Yep, and it's actually a big company. Mm -hmm. And at first I'm, going to say, well, why don't you see, why don't we see how it goes? Yep. We'll try some products. If it goes well, then let's talk about, you know, a sponsorship after that. Okay, so. cool. So pivoting a little bit now into a lot of kids nowadays, 2022 is a weird world. You know, you see all these people complaining on Facebook about how no one's applying for jobs anymore. And it's like, well, yeah, it's because my niece can make $70,000 talking about slime on the internet. So it's <laughs> like, yeah, I understand why they're not going to apply at your Dairy Queen. Right. But talk to me a little bit about this avenue of the world where the world is going that is YouTube a viable career path for people that are growing up? And if you think it is, what does that look like for these people? Obviously it's not an overnight thing, but what does that look like? I I think it's a a very valid, if you have a, I'm just speaking to parents now, if you have Mm -hmm. a child that's really interested in YouTube, most of them are probably interested in YouTube because of Mr. Beast or, you know, any of the, any creators like him. And I think what people need to understand is that's not 
YouTube. That's not the majority of YouTube. Yeah. The majority of YouTube is stuff like I do. And, and so what it takes is openness for parents and, and just people in general, you know, if not necessarily just children, but an example of there's a, there's a person that I follow on Twitter and I can't recall who it was right now, but they had a, um, a career day at their school. Right. Okay. So, so they go to school and they, all these parents are telling what they do, you know, firefighter, you know, they own a furniture store or whatever. And, and, um, and then someone was a YouTuber and, and the kid, no, I know what it was. They asked the kid, what do you want to be when you grow up? They yep. were asking all the kids and one kid said, I want to be a YouTuber. And, and the teachers all laughed. Yeah. And they're like, okay, that's good. Yeah. You'll, you know, but mm-hmm. in all seriousness, that kid, if he really wants to be a YouTuber can be, can make a ton of money and it, it's a long game. But when, once you hit it, yeah. yeah and that's, a, I have a story very similar to that. I was, I won't say the name of who, but, um, I was at a speaking gig with another business owner and we're in this, there's a bunch of kids in the room and I'm obviously talking about my video stuff. He's talking about his business and the kids all write on their piece of paper, what they want to be. And so-and-so just like you said, firefighter and I want to be a police officer and all this stuff. And the one kid said, YouTuber in this business owner who this is when I was probably like two years ago when I was just starting my business, I was a year in, uh, this kid, they're probably like eight, nine, 10 years old says he wants to be a YouTuber in this other business gentleman totally shut it down. And he's like, Oh, you can't be a YouTuber. It's way too sad. And I was like, dude, these kids are nine. I'm like, why, why are you telling him this? And it's like, he was not an older gentleman, but he was like, up there, like he'd been in the business for a while. And I was like, dude, why are you shutting these kids dreams down where it's like, I don't think a lot of people, I think 50% of the people really think it's like, Oh yeah, YouTube, you can definitely do that. But I think the other 50% is like, no, it's not even a real thing. Social media is fake. Mm-hmm. Like even TikTok creators right now are making right. stupid amounts of money just by making dancing videos yeah, and, exactly. doing, and doing all this stuff, which <laughs> is, it's such a weird, weird world we live in. Yeah, really um, nice. I want to pivot a little bit now into the business side of things. So we were talking before we started rolling the cameras that uh, your drone business that you have. So I talk to me a little bit about that and then we'll go into my question. Yeah. As I got more into drones, I started realizing that I could use my drones to make money. Mm -hmm. And so what I did is I, I got my part 107 remote pilot certificate, which is required to further business in any way with a drone. Mm -hmm. And um, when I realized that I could not only make money on YouTube, with my drones and teaching people about drones, but mm-hmm. also I could go out and take photographs and videos for people and start making money that way. Yep. And I started reaching out to some realtors and saying, Hey, do you have any need for aerial photos in your listings? Yep. And they're like, yeah, that'd be sweet. And so I just started doing that and, and it was, it was, it's fun. Mm-hmm. I love it because it's quick. And it's are you still easy. doing that now? I'm interested. Yeah. I okay. just, yeah, I just did two last week. And, um, and then I, I also do interior photos now. So I'm kind of, moving into more real there estate, you, you know, creation type stuff. And I, I enjoy it. It's just another way for me to be creative, you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah, just being able to, and then I can make some people want videos as well. So that's yep. just another way that I can work on making videos. And it helps having all those different skills too. Yeah, absolutely. It does. It, it goes back and, you know, between each other, it helps both sides of the business. So, so yeah. that brings me to my question. You have a normal business. I would call it a normal business where it's, you know, you're working with clients, you're providing a service, this and that. Yep. YouTube business, I wouldn't say it's the most normal business because it's no. so different. Right. What are the differences? How do you differentiate those two? Um, working I, in both of them. I still don't think of YouTube as a business at all. Okay. Except for during tax time. Yeah. <laughs> that's when they make you count it as a business. That's right. Yeah. That's a big paycheck that I have to write, but or pay, paycheck for them, yeah. for the tax man. But the benefit is the write-offs. You yeah. Know, so. Oh, the write-off people. Who writes it off? The write-off people. Yeah, that's right. That's that's the running joke of me and Nathan behind the camera here is that yeah, uh, right. the running jokes. I was like, ah, just write it off. Who but, writes it off? The write-off. But people. yeah, I've never actually just kind of like considered it or thought of it like a business. I just look at it as a, a venue for me to express my creativity. And, mm-hmm. and I'm not that creative, but I just, I enjoy doing that side of things. On the drone side of things, yeah, I I need to do better, honestly, to build that business because I don't have a website. You know, I don't, it's all word of mouth, all word of mouth. And, and I, after this comes out, more people are going to know that I do that uh, because I'm going to share the heck out. You're welcome. (laughs) There you go. Let's see. We're just plugging them here. Yeah. And so, you know, you know, if people do want 
aerial services, mm-hmm. I can, you know, I do that. I've done inspections for companies. Um, I sign up for some national companies that hire drone pilots, local drone pilots, okay. and then, you know, do roof inspections or building inspections. I suppose I didn't even think about that side of things. Cause yeah. when I think drones, I think all just photo video, photo video, because yeah. that's where you are, yeah. you know, but yeah, I, you know, inspect, um, wind towers, you know, you can do all okay. kinds of stuff like that. So that's pretty sweet. I didn't even realize the avenue. Yeah. There's a whole there. commercial side of things that you can do, you know, oil and they ag- don't need, agriculture. And they don't even give a shit about the photos and videos. They're like, go nope. make sure that wind turbine wings not gonna make sure there's no hole on there yeah make sure that bolt is tight or whatever so okay cool so talk about your content a little bit more marketing is very important we talked about the different platforms you market on uh how do you market your content personally um mostly on just on instagram and then on youtube twitter is it's a different animal Mm -hmm. um my my viewers don't really engage on twitter very much i think that's more for a little bit younger generation uh from that demographic but but i still use it Mostly. I, say, I see you pretty active on Twitter. Is that yeah, I try but talking with your own niche. Would you yeah, say or no? Yeah. And, and try to reach out to brands, you know, yeah. you try to tag people and try to get them yeah. to notice you. That's what Twitter's for. Like right, right before this, when I tagged Aperture, I was like, yeah. Hey, fix my light. You I want just, me to bring one? I threw at the floor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I, everything I post on YouTube is shared on Instagram and TikTok. Okay. And I just use those three basically to work between each other. But the goal is to get everything into that YouTube basket. One conglomerate there in the yeah. middle. Yep. And so. so have you found one of the other platforms works better than the other? Lately with Instagram, mm-hmm. uh, Reels. Instagram okay, yeah. Reels is on fire. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing more valuable right now in social media than Instagram Reels. And that's one thing that I pitch my clients when doing video stuff is we can do these big, huge 30 second ads for like television, but right. I had yesterday uh, posted a podcast clip and it got 6,000 views in like 25 minutes. Yeah, right. And then it's like, okay, well, why is that working compared to, you know, something else you might be doing? So, you know, just pitching the clients are like, hey, maybe you should take advantage of TikToks. And Reels. See, I find TikToks a little bit harder than Reels yeah. to figure it out. But yeah. the Reels um, algorithm is very favorable right now. It's yeah. so... it's Well, you even scroll on Instagram and every other post probably more than that yeah, is, too much, is, actually. is a real yeah <laughs> too much like, I, I want to see a photo of my friend <laughs> i know yeah it's it's definitely changing but i i'd say use that change to your benefit you know and like you like you said when you make videos for businesses i think a lot of those businesses especially, especially in our community are still stuck on that that mm-hmm. commercial that tv commercial and, and where they do i need put to, it that's the only place i can put it it's like no there's oh, so many social media so many right. avenues um you know there was a, a marketing professional in my in my day job that a couple of years ago laughed when we wanted to do stuff on Facebook. Really? And you know, and he's like, Facebook, what? <laughs> well, now we have a social media manager yeah. posting stuff on that's Facebook. R- that's running everything. Seriously. I mean, I mean the <laughs> people underestimate everyone's always so behind social media. Well, yeah, we are. Uh, it's I want to better. But yes, still. it is. Well, and especially mine, it's kind of tough because things get here a little bit later. Yes. Pretty absolutely. conservative. Yeah. Uh, I want to get into now some tactical information some people can use sure. some kids, some older people, whoever really wants to use it. But what do you think is important to know when you're starting a business business in general, or, you know, YouTube channel, what do you think is important to know before you take that first step going into it? Oh my gosh, that's a hard question from the mind of Russ. <laughs> um, again, I don't think of it as a business, but I think what or you things have, that you wish you knew at the beginning, uh, th- things that I, I wish I knew is planning uh, ahead of time, a long-term goal. Okay. Um, I kind of have a long-term goal now after five years of doing this. Yep. But when I first started, I just, just kept pushing my videos and kept, you know, I just focus on the moment, which mm-hmm. isn't a bad thing, I guess. But if you want to progress to, and if you want to be big, yep. you have to think about, okay, I need to do these six steps before the end of the year to get to this point. Okay. And whether it's subscribers or whether it's revenue or number of sponsorships or whatever, mm-hmm. you have to set that goal and then write it down. Figure out the steps it takes to get there. Yeah. You gotta you gotta go backwards, you know, to pick that goal and then go back and say, okay, I'm gonna do this first. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna reach out to this person and I'm mm-hmm. gonna do this. Um, I'm gonna call my tax man, make sure that works for yeah. that. Or whatever. Can I write this off? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, I think find that big thing and then come back and just pick the little things to go to it. So now I want to ask YouTube specific 
how do you how would you get it off the ground if you had to say one thing to like if my sister tomorrow wanted to start a channel on baking pick a niche that you are passionate about and be genuine um i think that's a pretty rare thing on youtube is being genuine like being um down to earth personable yep. like share your personality i know for me i feel like personality goes so far in the youtube world yeah for sure and i at first i i was really shy and like i said really mm -hmm. cringy and just like and and part of it was like one worrying what other people are going to think right yep. and that's kind of why a lot of people don't know that i do this because i still have that apprehension like you know people, people are going to judge you about oh, it oh yeah. us is a youtuber Pff, that's no. a joke well it's not a joke yes. anymore i made more money on on youtube last year than on my regular job after 25 years that's so awesome so <laughs> so i think people need to understand that what goes on behind the scenes? You don't, you don't know what goes on behind the scenes. Yeah. I mean, I'm up till midnight. I'm up at four 30 in the morning mm -hmm. because I have a day job as well. And you got to work around it. Yeah. And now I'm at a point where like, you know what? I don't care what anybody thinks. When, well, especially now this era, it's like <laughs> the only people, and I always say the only people that ever talk down or say bad things are the people that aren't doing things. Right. Right. Yeah. They, they criticize because they're, they're not trying it and they're not doing it. Correct. So, and I don't want to, I don't want to kind of come up sounding a little bit arrogant, but, but, there are people that do like, oh, oh, you got a YouTube channel? That's cute. Yeah. That's yeah. all. That's great. You make videos. Like, oh, how much money did you make on the internet <laughs> last year? So, Zero dollars. So it's fun. And and for me, like, like my big picture, you yep. know, I've kind of got a, this is this is a job that I can do until the day I die. Yep. And so when I retire from real work life, yep. this is something that I can continue to do. Some of the people in my niche are retired mm -hmm. and this is now their full time job. And they're still killing it which and is so sweet. and and also it's it's a for me it's a retirement yeah. income like like i don't have a great big retirement right now because i yeah. haven't been good at it so the money from this goes towards my future towards you know well, especially all right. these videos you're making they're evergreen so the right. more people watch them the, you just keep making money from passive it. income that's the way to build it so a couple more questions here for you i got sure. this is a good one i'm well, I'm excited for it. Hopefully it's a good one. What is your Mount Rushmore of YouTubers that you'd like to meet or collaborate with? Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> my Mount Rushmore, huh? Peter McKinnon, of yep. course. I mean, he's the, he's the goat, yep. right? Yep, he is. Um, That's literally how I got into video and photo. Started watching his videos, watch every single one. Yeah, and I've learned a lot from him, you know, not just because mm. he's entertaining, but he, t he taught me a lot about video editing, yep. you know, and, and photography and videography too. But, um, but just how to be a YouTuber and how to be that dynamic personality. Yep. Like you try to emulate. He's like, like a that. YouTuber's YouTuber. Yeah. Like the stereotypical. Like, Absolutely. This is a YouTuber. And there's people that, that don't appreciate him, but, but I think as a general rule or general like person to focus on for being successful on YouTube, he is, Oh yeah. he's it, you know, Casey's just kind of past Casey's time now. Casey but. Nice. I was the most weird <laughs> niche ever. He just would yeah. literally just. Do his day. Yeah, make a video about it. anything. And, and he's, yeah, he it. mastered, he but mastered it. No, he wouldn't be on my list. I would say him, uh, a Farouk from iPhone Doe. Okay. Yep. Um, he's one of my favorite creators. Uh, boy, what is that? Two? I need three more. I've, I've Two actually. Two more. More I've, people on Rushmore, I've I think. I've collabed with a, with a couple already. Peter Lindgren. Yeah. He, he's my, he's on my Mount, Mount Rushmore. Yeah. And we've done a little uh, collab with him. Which is sweet. Yeah. Yeah. I well, love his videos. His arms are. Oh man, he's huge. This big. Yeah. Yeah. And he's fun. He's down to earth. That's, yeah. that's what's great about him too. And then, uh, boy, who would be number four? God, I don't, I, I can't pick one. And I won't, I won't hold you to him. <laughs> if I ask you next week and you give me four different yeah. people, that's fine. There's so many good YouTubers. Easton out Bennett, there that, maybe? Oh, there you go. <laughs> YouTubers above 1000 subscribers, I'm about 300 away. Then I'll get there. Yeah. See, even having this conversation makes me want to go make a YouTube video right now, but right. I haven't made one in however long. Yeah, you're kind of busy, I think. Uh, yeah. Well, I got, I got to get back on it. That's where, that's where the eyeballs are at. Sure. And that's like you said, you know, that's kind of like a retirement plan. If eventually I want to stop taking some of the client projects, if I have that Avenue too, it would be good. Yeah. Um, so North star, what is your goal for the channel? Is there anything you have a goal? And it's the last question I got for you. Where do you want it to be in five, 10, 15, 20 years? Um, I want the, I want the channel to not plateau ever. Mm -hmm. And, and it's gonna, but that's my goal is to, if it gets to that point where I have a month where my subscriber count starts to decline. Yep. Then I know that something's wrong mm -hmm. and I need to change something. 
And so I guess that'd be my North star yeah. is to not have that downturn. Just keep her going. Just keep her going. Even if it's super Gradual. slow in, you know, increase or whatever. And, and then, um, I want a half a million subscribers. That's, that's, that's the goal. my goal. Half a million. I yeah. Think and, you- and I'm not going to quit. Yeah. Once I get there, but that's the, that's to me, 500k is a lot of people too. Yeah. It's crazy to even think about. And, I, and that would be a point where I could be very comfortable mm-hmm. being a full-time YouTuber. Okay. Yeah, that's and, yeah, that was the other question I had for you is like when would you ever transition to full-time YouTuber? I don't know if I ever will because it's really nice having two incomes. Yeah. But if you but when you get to that point, you you're going to have to work really really hard to keep mm-hmm. it going and you I don't think you could have two jobs. No. And that's know, where and, and be successful at it. It's almost you got to you got to pick one and run with it. It's got to be full-time. So so that's kind of the number that I set, you know, mm-hmm. I could definitely do it now, but I don't yeah. want to. I mean, I enjoy my day job. I enjoy meeting people and yeah. helping people and talking to people. Like I enjoy the actual work. It's course. almost like, it's almost like uh, Bonnie and Clyde. Yeah. Jekyll and Hyde. You're just at yeah. night. You're just rocking the YouTube channel. Yeah. Well, that's all the questions I got for you. Thanks for coming on. Where can people find you? Where can they find 51 drones on the internet? Uh, 51 drones everywhere. 51 drones, YouTube at 51 drones, Instagram at 51 drones on Twitter at 51 drones on TikTok. There you go. Find them anywhere you can at 51 <laughs> drones and obviously YouTube because that's, that's the one thing we're talking about here. That's right. Russ, thank you for coming on. Thank Appreciate you, it. If you guys like this, please hit like, comment, subscribe, do all the things. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, leave a review. It really helps with having other people see it. And we will see you guys next Wednesday for episode 11, I think. Is this episode 10? Yeah, this is episode 10. We'll see you next week for episode 11 of the Mind Up Business Podcast.